Hello and welcome to this Notch tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at the EF EVE volumetric capture data, and we're going to look at importing this data straight into Notch. The Connect Azure's cameras are used to collect the data. They're synced together and they'll collect the data in the 3D world. Then the data from the Azure's cameras is processed by EF EVE, and they export that data out as an OBJ sequence and an image sequence. And both the OBJ and image sequence can be imported into Notch, where you can put them together to create a 3D animated object. So let's get started on how to do this. So the guys at EF Eve have given us some data to use. They've given us some OBJ sequences and they've given us some image sequences to use. Now I've got a blank scene and I'm just going to import the data into the scene so you can see how it works. First thing we want to do is go to the resource browser and import the OBJ sequence. I'm going to right click, go to 3D, and right at the bottom you can see OBJ sequence. We've got three of these sequences, and I'm going to choose the last one. When you open the folder, you'll have all the OBJ sequence meshes. If you select the first one, Notch will recognize the rest as a sequence, and it will automatically generate an animation from them. So you open that, bring it in as you would any other object. So if you have scene scale that you need to change, do that. So that's the OBJ sequence imported. So I'm going to bring that into the scene, connect it to the root, and you can see here we have a 3D person. And this 3D guy is doing some sort of yay dance. I think he's uh, doing some sort of celebratory dance. Now that I've got my OBJ sequence imported, I'm going to import my image sequence. So I'm going to right click in the resources window, go to import resource, go to video, and then image sequence. And now I'm in the same windows folder as the OBJ sequence. I'm going to select the first frame, which is the first image in the set. As it did with the OBJ sequence, Notch will see this as a sequence and import them all in order. Select the first frame, open up the image. I'm going to bring it in at 30 FPS, which is absolutely fine. There I have my image sequence. And the next step is quite important to do. I'm going to turn my image sequence into a Notch LC movie file. So I'm going to select my image sequence in the resources panel, right click on it, go down to the bottom. It will give me the image sequence options and I want to center render queue for transcoding. So that's now in the render queue. Click on it in the render queue and hit render. So that not Chelsea movie file will be generated in the same place the image sequence was generated. So if I right click in resources, go to video, import video, and it's in the same folder as the image sequence. So I'll bring that movie file in and there I have a transcoded movie. So this uh, transcoded movie is just a lot easier to use than the image sequence. Now I can drop the video into the node graph as a video loader. From this point, I need to get a material onto the 3D object. So I'll go to materials, bring in a normal material, connect that up to the object, and then connect the video loader up to the color slot on the material. The first thing you'll notice is the material is not UV'd properly on the object. And the reason for this is we have to first of all flip the y-axis UVs so they're in alignment with the UVs on the 3D object. So there you go, that's flipped. And now that is working perfectly. The UVs are fine and it's looking good. If we play the sequence, you can see that the frame rate between the video loader and the frame rate in the imported 3D scene are not tracking each other properly. So we need to add something to get that to work. And that's an extractor. So if I go to my nodes, type in extractor, I'll bring in this extractor modifier. And what this extractor modifier will do is it'll take the frame rates from the video loader. It will import them into the 3D scene. So I'll hook up my video loader into the extractor. In the extractor, I've got to put in the current playing frame and I want to replace the frames on the imported 3D scene. Wherever the frame is on the video loader, it will make sure that it's the same frame within the 3D scene. Now, the other thing to note between these, there is a difference in scale between the video loader and the imported 3D scene. 
So the video gives its current playing frame, but the 3D scene expects the time in seconds. So what we have to do is do a conversion, 1 over 25. So once we've done that, and we can pipe this into the time control on the 3D scene, you can see that both of them are in line now. So the video loader is in line with the imported 3D scene, and they are playing perfectly. Now, another thing I want to do is just slow it down a little bit. So the frame rate's a little bit fast. I'm going to take that to around 10 FPS and that will reduce it down to a proper sort of world scale. So it's not so fast. And it's probably a little bit slower. I'll make that 12. Now that we've got that working, I'm going to apply it to a more interesting scene. This is a scene I happened to make earlier. It may look very familiar. One of our other artists named Armin may have had something to do with its creation. This is a great way of uh, showing what you can do with the EF Eve data. I've got the scene here and I'm going to bring in the data and stick it into the scene so we can do something interesting with it. So adding the EF Eve data to the scene is really straightforward. We've done it before. I'm going to do it again and show you how we set all this up. If I go to import resource, import 3D, and I go to OBJ sequence, then I'm going to select the first frame of the OBJ sequence, select that, and it'll select all the others. And then I'm going to reduce it down by 0.01 and bring that in. Now I'm going to go back to resource, import resource, go down to video and import my image sequence. So it's in the right file there, select the first frame of the image sequence and import. You can bring that in at 30 FPS and that's fine. My image sequence, I'm going to now transcode it into a movie so it's a lot easier to use. So right click on the image sequence, go down to the image sequence texture properties and go to center render queue for transcoding. So that's now in my render queue. If I open up my render queue, you can see it's in there. So now I can just render that out. And that's rendered that out to the same place the image sequence was stored. So I go back to my resources, import resource, go down to video and import the video. I've left all the nodes in there. So we've got the video loader that that came off. So I'm going to bring in my video and just populate that. So there's the transcoded movie in there and that's creating that material. Here are my two 3D scenes. I'm going to populate this node with the OBJ sequence and this node. I'm going to keep that one turned off for now and I'll show you what that's doing in a minute. So this one's connected up to the null. This has all been scaled down as well and we've rotated it so it's rotating to the front. Open up the 3D scene and on the object I want to attach the material. Obviously that material is all set up so the extractor is extracting the current frame from this one onto the imported 3D scene and we need to set that up. So we open up the imported 3D scene and that extractor can be connected onto there. And I've already flipped the Y on the video loader so that lines up nicely. So if we press play, there is our 3D guy in the scene. The next thing we want to do is we want to clone to volume. So we want some boxes on this guy. I'll just turn these off so you can see the boxes come on. For this to work, you have to select the object out of the imported 3D scene. If you close this up and try and connect the imported 3D scene to the clone to volume for the object source, it won't connect. So what you need to do is expand it so the object's there and then connect the actual object to the 3D scene. And as soon as I do that, you can see that the 3D primitive box here is being cloned to the volume of the 3D object. And all we've done is reduce down the size of the clone boxes so that we can see each individual one. On top of that, we've added a plane effector. And this plane effector basically goes up and down and removes some of the boxes from the clone to volume. And that's attached to a math modifier. So if I turn on the math modifier, we can see that working. And that just bounces up and down on this random scale. It removes some of the clone to volume boxes. And on top of that, we've added a randomize effector. If we turn that on, it randomizes how many boxes are on the guy. And it just looks a bit more interesting rather than having all the primitives covering his volume in one go. It sort of randomizes and makes it look a bit nicer.
Now, the other thing this guy's got, you can see all the polygons on his actual mesh. And the way we've done that is we've done it through the combined geometry. So if we turn on the combined geometry, add that object to the combined geometry. And all we've done is we've turned the lines on so that they uh, are additive on top of the polygons of his mesh, just to give you a bit more interest on the mesh. The other version of the 3D scene is here. And this is basically duplicated straight over the top. When we turn it on, we're just adding some extra highlight details to his actual mesh. So again, what I need to do with this one is select the material to the mesh, and I need to take the extracted frames and connect them to, if they're not already, the LWS time controller, which they already are. And that's pretty much it. It's a very basic scene but a great way to show how to use the EF Eve data. This file will be available in the link in the description below. Hope you liked this tutorial. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next Notch tutorial.